All right, so my thoughts and prayers and condolences go out to the family, loved ones of Stefan Clark of Sacramento, California, who was shot unjustly 20 times by a suspected race soldier because he had an iPhone and a crowbar. The thing about it, it's, you know, here's the thing, family. You are classified as black in America. You have an iPhone and a crowbar. You're a bigger threat than Nicholas Cruz. You're a bigger threat than Mark Anthony Condit. You're a bigger threat than Dylan Roof. You have guys that are making that are making sophisticated bombs, mailing off explosive devices at, at FedEx, making explosive devices with tripwires, sophisticated uh, explosives. Right. And they're labeled somebody with a troubled past. They're labeled somebody with mental health issues. They're labeled with somebody with a rough upbringing. Nicholas Crude is labeled somebody that's a lonely killer. Dylan Roof shot and executed unarmed black people at a church. And he was taken to Burger King before he was taken to custody. Those type of people are terrorists. Point blank and simple. But the dominant white society wants to mask it around and make sure that terrorists who are classified as white aren't labeled as such. And they make a black man with an iPhone and a crowbar a bigger threat than the true actual terrorists in the new in the United States of America. That's the reality that we live in, family. That is the reality. Stefan Clark was shot 20 times because of an iPhone and a crowbar. Not to mention he's black. <laughs> right? This is the routine of this. You got suspected race soldiers who shoot an unarmed black man, right? This is the routine that always happens. They shoot an unarmed black man fatally. They go on paid administrative leave. There's an investigation. They go to court, criminal court, whatever the case may be. And it goes two ways, guilty or not guilty. In between those times, there's marching, there's protesting, there's outcries. There's, you know, hashtags, there's crowdfunding, and I will have the uh, info regarding uh, Stefan's um, GoFundMe page in a minute. I'll talk about it in a few minutes. But that's the routine that we're, we're, we're going to experience with this, okay? Um, so as you can see here, family, 244 people have been shot and killed by so-called police officers in 2018. All right. Stefan Clark was shot and killed on March 18, 2018, unarmed black man in Sacramento, California. He was only 22 years old. He had his whole life ahead of him. Ahead of him. Um, he had two children, I believe two boys. And from what I'm reading, he was doing just doing the right thing. Was he at the wrong place at the wrong time? I'm not too sure. But regardless of the fact that he had an iPhone and a crowbar and the fact that he had black skin, that made him a threat. So his, his the threat level was so high, they shot this man 20 times because these so-called police officers, these suspected race soldiers, they're going to say they were in fear of their life. That's why he was shot. They're going to say the iPhone looked like a semi a semi-automatic weapon. Looked like the same weapon that Dylan Roof had to kill unarmed black people at a church or the same automatic weapons that Stephen Paddock had last year sh shooting all kinds of rounds in the crowd at a country music concert in Las Vegas. That's what we're dealing with, family. That's the reality of the situation. 22 years old, his whole life ahead of him, 
gone just like that because your skin tone, your melanin, is the biggest threat known to man. Bottom line. So you can have a Bible in your hand, like literally a Bible, and the police officers or so-called police officers will think that is a semi-automatic weapon, some kind of threat. And they're going to say they're, they, they were in fear of their lives, their life was in danger, therefore they had to shoot. That's what's going to happen. That's the cycle that's always going to continue to happen, family. Right? That's the reality that we live in. Of course, you look, you look, you look, you look at this logically. You look at this logically. Of course. This man did not deserve to be shot at all. Okay. Um, now, it was reported that someone called the police officers. <clears throat> and, and this obviously is it's going to be more investigation towards this. But my question is, why were their weapons already drawn? Right. The body cam footage and the body cam footage is already out. Their weapons were already drawn as if. Someone told them the man who had a crowbar and an iPhone had a weapon. So someone must have tipped the police or tipped 911 and identified Stephon Clark as somebody with a weapon. And therefore their, their weapons, the so-called police officers' weapons were drawn. So there's going to be some investigation regarding that as well, Right. I want to find out. I want to find out who actually made that call, who made that call to make to ensure that these so-called police officers, these suspected race soldiers came on the scene with weapons already drawn. And on top of that, when they shot Stefan Clark multiple times, they had the nerve to ask him, put your hands up, show your hands when he was already dead. That was very telling right there. That that is the that is the. The troglodyte, no remorse situation that we are dealing with. There's no remorse. These are sociopathic troglodytes that have that thought process of asking a dead person, a dead man, show your hands after you shot him 20 times. Right? <laughs> That's what it is, family. That's what it is. All right. These are all facts right here. All facts that happened. This man was shot unarmed multiple times with an iPhone and a crowbar in his hand. And yet he is a bigger threat than someone like Mark Anthony Conduit. Like a Dylan Roof, like a Nicholas Cruz. He is a bigger threat than those three guys. Right? That's what we're dealing with, family. That's the reality of the situation. We live in a system of racism, white supremacy. Bottom line. Bottom line. So, family, um, Stefan Clark has, hashtag Stefan Clark, they do have a crowdfunding site on GoFundMe. I'll have the link in the description. You can make a contribution to their crowdfunding. Uh, right now they have over 65 or $64,000 in their GoFundMe page with over 1800 people who pledged and, uh, they, you know, they are surpassed their goal of $50,000. They need a million dollars. They need more. So, uh, go ahead and make your contribution family. All right. Um, I'm going to continue to follow up on this story. Uh, once more investigation comes out, like I said, I want to find out who made that call, who made that call and why the so-called police officers, these suspected race soldiers, why they came out with their guns already drawn. I want to find out who made that call. All right. That's what I want to find out. All right. Family, so those are my thoughts on that. Leave your comments down below about this story. Let me know what you guys think about this story and, and Stefan Clark and, you know, the Sacramento area. Uh, I'd like to hear your comments down below, family. Until next time, family, Chauncey, a.k.a. The Black Separatist, signing out. Peace.